everybody. Happy Sunday. It's your favorite auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Power. This is season six, episode two. Whose side are you on? Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was good. I'm going to give y'all my predictions of who I think is going to make it throughout this season because I can already tell some of these fools ain't going to make it. Some ain't going to make it. Some of them are in too old, too deep over their damn head. Also, before we get into the review, just want to let y'all know I'm sipping on some sangria today. I forgot to get my grapes and my strawberries to put in because I was going to make it look all fancy and stuff like that. But... Y'all get the gist. Got my sangria ready. Hopefully, y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So, we're starting out. So, you remember how it ended last time when Ghost was shooting up Tommy's car, right? So, we're starting off, a tow truck is pulling Tommy's car, like, away from where it was, whatever, right? You can see it's riddled with bullet holes blood and shit all up in it right so ghost is in the cut looking and you know he kind of feeling bad like dang i just killed my homeboy it's at the same little warehouse place where tommy always meets up with the serbians at shout out to my niece out there uh what's your name don't trip i said it i like that name you corrected your auntie they are serbians thank you so much poo -poo. thank you for that boo. i appreciate that but ghost goes in there and he sees a serbian dude right he was like look here my bad for taking Tommy out, but you know, this was family business. I had to do what I had to do. Serbian, like, you know what I'm saying? What you got going on with him, that's messing up my business. I got money to make out here in these doggone streets. So Ghost is like, look here, I just want to make sure ain't going to be no beef between me and you. Serbian dude letting him know, look here, you just took out my main distro. So if you don't want me to get no retalia retaliation against you, you need to pay me 100000 every two weeks just to keep me off your ass. Really? But he know Ghost got money like that. See, the Serbian dude, he don't like Ghost. So any way that he can get over on him, he's trying to do that anyway. Because really, had it been for Tommy, Serbian would have took Ghost ass out a long doggone time ago. So the Serbian dude, he playing the cool. Now, mind you, Serbian already knows that Tommy ain't dead. But he doesn't know that Ghost don't know that he know that. So that's why he's telling him, yeah, you pay me a hundred thousand, stay off your ass, yeah, I'll leave you alone. Ghost like, I so Tommy getting dropped off by an Uber driver that Tyreek set up for him. Now the Uber driver was a straight asshole. Him and Tommy end up getting into it. Tommy said, fool, I ain't giving you no stars. I ain't even giving you a half a star. So they both getting into it. Tommy calls Tyreek and was like, thank you for setting up that Uber driver. But look here, I need you to go to Yelp or whatever and get this fool a bad review because his car stuck. He didn't know how to drive, none of that. He getting all mad. So Tyreek is like, Uncle Tommy, what happened? Like, why are you not in your car? Why did you have to have me set this up for you? He said, look here, something happened. I'll explain it to you later. I can't let you know that right now, but I'm going to holler at you later. Now, later on, Tommy goes and meets with the hood dudes that are his little worker boys or whatever. Tells them, you know, look here, I got your product. At the same time, word on these streets is I'm supposed to be dead. They like, what you talking about, fool? I'm looking at you right now. He like, no, somebody tried to kill me. So as far as everybody knows right now, I'm dead. So don't say nothing to nobody that you just seen me. One of his hard TTG dudes was like, hey, you want me to go kill this fool? I kill his mama, his sister, his dog, all of that. What you want me to do? He like, no, nah, fool, chill. I got this. This is personal family business. Don't worry about it. Tommy wants to take Ghost out. Ghost and Tommy try to kill each other. They don't need no help with that. These fools will end up killing each other. Tyreek's roommate in college comes and brings in some random dude that they go to school with. Hey, yeah, this is the dude I was telling you about. Hey, Rick, he trying to buy some pills. He's like, what's up? I heard you got that good stuff. Tyreek like, what the hell are you talking about? I ain't got nothing. Dude, like, see, man, I tell you, wait, man. You be lying all the time. That's why we don't ever invite you over to the games or nothing. So the dude got mad and he left. Tyreek is like, hey, man, why are you going to tell this dude? He was like, hey, I'm trying to get you some business, save you some money. Tyreek tell him next time he wants some, he needs to go through you. Tyreek gonna toss this fool a bag of pills and was like, charge him $30 a pill. You take 10 off top, and that's what we gonna do. Don't be sending nobody my dog on way, my foot. Like, wait, so so Tyreek is the Nino Brown out here? Tyreek, Tyreek out here selling drugs? Like, what the what? Ghost goes to meet up with Proctor. 
Ghost is freaked out now. He like, look, I gotta let you know I killed Tommy. Proctor like, what the hell you mean you killed Tommy? He was like, look here, it was personal. I had to kill Tommy. Tommy killed Angela. If I didn't kill Tommy, Tommy was gonna kill me. Proctor like, look here, man, what you coming over here telling me for? Ghost is like, I need you to alibi for me. Proctor like, man, I was literally at my daughter's recital last night when the new U.S. District Attorney showed up and was talking to me there. So no, I got my own alibi. I wasn't with you. You gonna have to holler at Tasha. He like, man, Tasha hate my ass right now. I can't ask her to alibi for me. So now Ghost is in a bind. He like, I lost Tommy. I lost Angela. Tasha ain't gonna have my back. Now what the hell am I gonna do? You should have thought about that before you was out here only thinking about yourself when it came to certain things, Ghost. Next thing you know, it's a knock at the door. Ghost freaking the hell out. Proctor freaking the hell out. Proctor gonna open the door. It's a dude. Hi, are you d -d 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 Proctor? He was like, yep, you've been served. Come to find out. Proctor's ex, his ex-wife, the one that was on coke real bad, she's now trying to sue this fool for custody of the daughter. So now Proctor looking at James like, okay, Tasha told you she wanted a divorce. You really want a divorce? Because my nigga, it might be cheaper to keep her ass. Y'all, so next, Detective Blanca and Detective Donovan go pop up at Tasha's house. They want to ask her questions about Terry Silver. Mind you, he still lost, ain't showed up nowhere. But we already know Ghost done already killed this fool, right? So they go knocking on Tasha's door. Of course, you know, caught Tasha off guard. She's like, okay, well, what the hell you want? I didn't know what you are. What do you want? She said, well, we're here to ask you some questions about um, Terry Silver. Have you seen him? When was the last time you seen him? She was like, I don't know. As a matter of fact, I've been looking for him too. And she was like, really? So were y'all cool? So when was the last time you seen him? So when was the last time y'all hung out? Like she really going hard on Tasha because she know Tasha knows something about Terry Silver, but she doesn't know exactly what and she can't prove anything. Then, this, I don't like this Detective Blanca. She too involved. I don't like her. Then she starts going from questioning her about Terry to questioning her about Angela. So do you know who killed Angela? What was your involvement in her murder? I know you knew something that was going on. Detective Donovan has to tell her like, hey, yo, you need to chill with all that. Matter of fact, Mrs. St. Patrick, we are so sorry for disturbing you. We'll come back if we have any further questions. Detective Donovan had to pull her ass away and was like, girl, what is wrong with you? You end up going too hard. You gonna make it to where we ain't gonna be able to get no kind of information whatsoever. But this heifer, Detective Blanca, is like, no, I know that that heifer is in something. I was in, a, in, uh, in uh, what she say, an investigation room with her for six hours. So I know she not finna crack. We gonna have to put a tail on her. But Donovan is trying to tell her, look, they ain't finna pay for no tail to go on her. No, you gonna have to give it up. Give it up, turn it loose. I don't trust this Blanca. I don't trust her. She too doggone involved in it. She the type, I feel like, will plant some evidence on somebody just to see them go down. I don't trust that Blanca. Mm -mm. I don't trust that happen. Moving on from her. Also, um, Paz is at Angela's office, cleaning up her office and stuff, right? Taking her plaques off the wall, like cleaning off her desk, her off her desk and all that. So she goes in her drawer and she pulls out that address book. If you remember from the past episodes, Angela was always writing in some address book. Soon as she gets that address book, she's gonna put it away with the rest of the things that she's taking for her. Sax bitch ass walks in. Sax walks in and is like, oh, uh, that's government issued. Um, I'm gonna have to take that. That's gonna have to go with her cell phone and her uh, laptop. So Paz gives it to her. Of course, she's not knowing no better. Now, I'm holding on to that in the back of my mind somewhere because that just didn't seem right. That was Angela's personal address book, but he was slick. He took that from her, right? So he then tells Paz that there has been a pot, whatever, a later. I can't help, all I see is a later from Orange is the New Black when I see her. That's, I don't see no Paz, Paz, whatever her name is. All I see is a later. So we gonna call her a later, okay? <laughs> Let me stop. That ain't that damn girl name on here. Anyways, he tells Paz that um, Angela's assets have been frozen. Basically trying to say that her being involved with ghosts, they don't know what she was into. They don't know what money was what money. So they got to freeze on all of her assets until they can sort some things out. So Paz is like, what do you mean sort some things out? So Sax tries to be an asshole. He's like, well, how well did you really know your sister? And she's like, wait a minute. I gave you permission to cut on her body so you could get evidence to put ghosts in custody. Now you coming at me asking me how well do I know my sister? No, how well are you out there doing your doggone job? Because basically now what he's trying to say is that, you know what? 
Angela's hands wasn't as clean as she's trying to make it seem, right? So now that's when Paz realizes, like, damn, I can't pay for her funeral. All the assets are frozen. And I think her sister was probably her beneficiary. So now she can't pay for the funeral. She can't do anything. Sex, oh, asshole. He's just going to say, all right, well, if you find out anything else, you know, holler at me, let me know. And just going to walk out the door like that. Leaving this girl like that. That was the, I don't, ooh, that sex, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I feel like somebody going to take his ass out. I'm just saying. Y'all watch me on that. Mark my words on that. Somebody going to take sex ass out. I got a feeling they are. So Tasha and Ghost are at that like little divorce hearing or whatever. The thing that you do so you don't have to go to actual court. So they're basically discussing the assets between them, what they're going to split up. Tasha, that's my girl. Tasha hired a forensics investigator to investigate ghosts. Come to find out, this fool had all kind of hidden assets Tasha didn't know nothing about. So he like, oh, really, Tasha? She like, nigga, really, ghost? You was hiding money and didn't say nothing to nobody? So then she tells him, look here, don't call me Mr. St. Patrick. I'm going back to Green. My last name is Green. Ghost looked pissed off when, he, when she said that, like, oh, really? Oh, really? You ain't trying to keep St. Patrick, bitch? Oh, okay, cool. So she tells him, look here, I won't have a everything. But unfortunately, per the prenup, if she initiates the divorce, she don't get nothing. But she's trying to tell them, like, look here, I take care of the kids. I'm the one to do everything. Like, ghost, you need to let up on your ghost. You need to give up the ghost. So later, when they get out of the office with the attorneys, they're right there by the elevators talking. And Tasha's like, look here, ghost, you wrong for that. You know you need to give me at least half. I need to be taking care of these kids. Yaz is growing like a weed. Tyree got school. He need books to send the other. Ghost is like, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you money. But she like, that's not enough. Ghost is like, okay, well, I need a favor for you. I need for you to go with me to answer this funeral. That's my hell. He like, look here, if I go to jail for this half a murder, you ain't gonna get jacked yet. Cause I, we, you really gonna be SOL then. And then not only that, if the feds find out that you was working with Angela, you gonna go to jail. So we gotta put on this front, like we one united front, so we can get out here ahead of this little thing that's going on. So Tasha tells him, I will, as long as you promise not to go after Tommy. Ghost is like, all right, cool. I ain't gonna go after Tommy, I'll leave him alone. All right. Tasha got this weird look on her face like, what the hell? He said that too easy. Because she don't know that Ghost thinks that he's already killed Tommy. Y'all, Ghost, you know, I used to really like Ghost, but Ghost, you want some, you want some other mess now, Ghost. I don't know if I can really rock with you. Later on, Sax ho ass meets up with Proctor's ex-wife. Now, he wants her to put a recording device on their daughter's backpack so he can record if Proctor does any kind of sneaky, shady shit with ghosts. Real shady. Now y'all know Proctor's ex is crazy. She can't, she don't trust sex, but she hates Proctor more than she doesn't trust sex. So this is what she says. Now, mind you, she's got a record because she used to be on coke real bad. So she applied for some kind of job, but she's saying because of her record, if she got a recommendation from sex, and she gets that job, then that'll give her more of an incentive to want to help him out. She's got court later on, of course, like we know, because she served in the papers. She got court later on with Proctor. So Sax is like, I can go with you and uh, make this really, really easy, you know, get you the, the results that you're looking for with your daughter. Now, how sneaky is that? This heifer is really going to go with it. Like... She's willing to do whatever. Like I said, she don't trust Sax, but she can't stand Proctor's ass. So whatever she got to do so she can get full custody over her daughter, even if that means setting him up so he can end up going to jail, so she can get full custody of the daughter, she going to do that. She's sneaky as hell. Somebody need to take her ass out. Too. So we back at Keisha house, right? Keisha and Tommy is there. Keisha's son, Cash, is sitting on the, um, I think he's sitting on the couch. He's playing a video game, watching a movie or something, right? So Keisha and Tommy are talking about, you know, what's going on with Ghost, how Ghost supposedly killed him, how Keisha went and got rid of the gun that, um, he used to kill Angela with. Now, as they're talking, it's a knock on the door. Keisha start freaking out. She's like, oh my God, it's the cops, it's the cops. Cash, go in your room, go in your room right now. Start freaking out. Tommy like, hey, chill out. It's, it's cool. Just open the door. You're going to be fine. She starts, I was 
finna say, mm. she starts goddamn panicking. She goes to the door, turns out it's Tasha. Tasha, she was like, what? Tasha like, dang, how, how you doing? She's like, what, man, what do you want? Mind you, she's still pissed off at Tasha over the salon crap. Like, girl, get over it. That's your girl. I'm sorry. Get over it. That's just how I feel, though. So, Tasha's asking Keisha, like, have you seen Tommy? I've been calling him. I went by his place. He's not answering. Have you seen him? So, she opens the door, shows, bam, Tommy's right here. He's fine. Close the door. Look, like, like I said, don't come back over here. Slams the door in Tasha's face. Tasha, like, what the hell? Like, girl, calm down. Um, Keisha, you ain't about this life no doggone way. You gonna need a homegirl that's gonna ride or die, so you need to be getting back cool with Tasha before it's too late, God damn it. So soon as she closes the door, Tommy like, damn, Keisha, what the hell? Like, why did you do that? She's like, nah, we are done with the St. Patrick's. We don't talk to them anymore. I told you that it just needs to be me and you. What? So... <laughs> Tasha texts Tommy and is like, WTF? What the hell just happened? He texts her back, I know, my bad. I'm sorry. We'll just meet up later. Because he already see, like, look here. This half of Keisha going to be a problem. Now, you remember he almost took her ass out last season. Don't give him a reason. So Tyreek is back at school. He walks into his room and Ghost is sitting right there on his bed. Ghost is there to tell him what's up. He basically let him know, like, look here. Your Uncle Tommy is dead and I had to kill him. Tyreek is like, what? What you mean he's dead? He was like, look, the reason why we were fighting when you came into his house the other day is because he shot Angela and killed her. He was aiming for me, trying to kill me. I ain't had no choice but to take him out. So Ty, um, Tyreek is like, so why did he try to kill you? Like, that don't make any sense. Why would he try to do that? Ghost is like, I don't know, man. I mean, sometimes the people you love most just turn on you. Not knowing that Tyreek already knows because Tommy told him that Ghost tricked him into killing his daddy. See, that's that old shady mess that Ghost is on. You could have kept it real with Tyreek, try to gain back some trust. But see, he doesn't know that Tyreek knows all of this. So Tyreek is like, you know what? All right, I got to do some studying. Kind of like brushes it off. So Ghost is like, all right, no big head nigga. All right, bye. I'll see you later. So Ghost leaves. Soon as Ghost leaves, Tyreek calls uh, Tommy. He was like, yeah, my dad just left him over here talking about your dad. Like, what's going on? I thought y'all was family. He was like, yeah, well, you know, your dad tried to kill me. He was like, well, my dad said that you tried to kill him, that you were aiming for him. Is that true? And so Tommy tells him, yes, I was trying to kill him. I was trying to take him out. So Tyreek tells him, next time before you aim and pull the trigger, give me a heads up first, all right? Like, he tells him, I didn't let him know that you were alive. So go, uh, Tommy's like, all right, bet. I appreciate that. So he said, like, next time before you aim, give me a heads up first. Are we good? Shit, Tommy like, bet. We good. Now, Tyreek, Tyreek, don't get in. You trying to be on some old Nino Brown type stuff. You need to calm down. Slow your roll. You get, you got, you a drug dealer now? Now you trying to get in the middle of hits and shit? Boy, if you don't calm your ass down and sit down and study something. So y'all, um, Rashad Tate, you know, he's a guy, he's played by Lorenz Tate with his old boring ass. He's running for governor. Him and Ghost are talking right before his press conference that he's doing. You know, he's doing a conference, the little press conference in Ghost's club, whatever, right? And so he's talking, basically, Tate is letting him know, look here, whatever kind of business you got going on, I ain't got nothing to do with that. And I'm not going down with you for some shit that you done did. I just need to know, did you kill Angela or no? Nah? He's telling him, like, nigga, please chill. I ain't kill that girl. You ain't got to worry about nobody going down for nothing because you ain't did nothing, so chill your ass out. So later on, when they're at the press conference, Tate is up there on the mic doing his thing. Good little politician man, right? Then some old hood dude come up out the, the audience and was like, yeah, well, what about the fact that I've been employed for the last 10 months? Like, what you gonna do about that? He starts going in talking about, well, when we do the, the city child project, whatever project that was, he was trying to start with ghosts. He like, man, don't tell me nothing about no city child project, especially nothing about James St. Patrick. He used to be a corner boy, dope boy back in the day, yada, yada, yada. Ghost then swoops in on the mic and basically takes over the whole press conference, leaving Tate looking dumb as hell. Cause Tate was like, oh, look like, like, like I just told you. Cause he just told him like, look here, I don't want you involved in nothing I got going on. I sent you chill the cut and shut the hell up. I don't need you to do nothing else. But then like I said, once the dude jumped out in the audience, it was like, man, he ain't this, he ain't that. 
that's when Ghost was like, oh no, my brother, let me tell you who I am. And so he does, he basically takes over the little conference. Tate is pissed after that. After the conference, Tate was like, look here, nigga, I told you. I don't want nothing to do with nothing that you got going on. But Ghost trying to tell him, look here, I told you, you need to chill your little monkey ass out that you ain't finna be involved in nothing. I got this. Ghost, you got too many niggas after you. Too many niggas after you. Later on, Tate had one of his little running boys go and find out who the little dude was that stood up and said that. Came to his office later on and he met up with him. He was like, look here, I heard you say something about you knew that James St. Patrick is being like a corner boy from back in the day, you know, yada, yada, yada. I know you down and out and you looking for some coins. I'm looking for somebody who can gather me up as much information about James St. Patrick as they can. Do a little dirt digging, you know what I'm saying? See what you can find out. All uh, home dude was worried about, well, is you paying green money? So now he got somebody else that's gonna be on his ass watching everything he do. James, you ain't safe out there, ghosts. It ain't safe. Later on, Tasha and Tommy meet up. Tommy tells Tasha about what Tyreek said, about how Ghost came there, talking about how he killed Tommy, but how Tyreek didn't say anything about Tommy actually being alive. Now, Tasha's sitting and wondering, like, you know, she's wondering if they really will be better off with Ghost being dead, because they'll be the beneficiaries. She won't have to worry about money, and she won't have to worry about Ghost, period. He'll be out of the picture completely. So that kind of got her wheels turning, as well as Tommy's wheels turning as well, because Tommy like, so what you trying to say? She like, I'm just saying, hold off. We ain't gonna do nothing just yet. Then they start talking about Keisha. Now, just like I said, Tommy was like, look here, I'm worried about your girl Keisha because when you came knocked on the door, she damn near thought the Federalities, the Federalities was there. She damn near shit on herself. Like, I don't think she built for this. And she not. She ain't built for this life. Look here. Keisha either going to get their ass caught, Keisha going to get killed, or Keisha going to try to kill somebody. But I don't trust Keisha. I was all with Keisha at first when she was naive and she didn't know nothing. Now she know too much. She trying to be a hustler's wife out here. She gonna get everybody caught up. But they was talking or whatever, um, Tommy and Tasha, cause you know, Tommy looking for a new car. Since Ghost done shot up his damn car. They out there looking for a new car or whatever. So Tasha tells Tommy, this is what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Just buy something nice. She'll come around. Keisha's tough. She just got to know that, you know, she's going to be taken care of. So she gives him some suggestions what you can do to sort of get in good with her because that's what you need to do. You need to coddle this heifer because she out here running wild. She's going to get every damn body locked up. Y'all, so Paz is still at and She's back at Angela's house cleaning out some more, right? She goes through one of Angela's drawers and finds that burner phone that Angela has. She turns it on and sees it's only one phone number in there figures that it's James St. Patrick's ghost. So she texts him. First she tries to call the number, nobody answered. Then she texts and was like, look here, we need to meet up. You owe it to my sister, James. And so somebody replies back, where? So Paz is like, oh, hell yeah. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. So Paz ends up going to some meeting spot that she texts it back to the address. She's sitting there and she waiting. Lo and behold, who shows up? It's Tasha. Because you remember Tasha and Angela were working together when it came to try to keep Tyreek ass out of jail for killing the old boy that shot Raina. So she trying to tell her, like, look here, I don't know, like, what's going on with your sister? whoop de woo Paz is telling her, look here, I know you know something that's going on with my sister. And unless you let me know what's going on, I'm going to take this phone to the cops and they can figure that shit out. Tasha tells her, look here, if you take that phone to the cops, that's going to expose your sister's secrets as well. Your sister wasn't completely innocent, okay? Now, mind you, your sister had my back. She always didn't make the best decisions, as you know, because she was steady running behind ghost ass. But when I needed her, she was there for me. So if it's anything that I can do for you or your family, please let me know. Paz is like, man, hell no, ain't a damn thing that you can do for me. You can't bring my sister back. But Tasha, like, look here, I'm just saying. If you turn that phone in, not only are you turning me in, but you're going to ruin your sister's reputation. You ain't going to get none of her benefits. You're going to be asked out. So everything that you're working so hard for to preserve for your sister, her reputation and the benefits, it's going to be SOL. So turn in that phone if you want to, homegirl. It's on you. 
and then Tasha walks away. <laughs> Just as Tasha's walking away, she starts to text Tommy and was like, damn, did you know Angela's sister was around? Like, what the hell? As she hits Finn to text Tommy, look up, it's fucking Detective Blanca. Out of nowhere. Tasha's like, damn, Heffa, was you following me? Like, where you come from? She's like, oh, no, I just had some more questions. Um, So you said you hadn't seen Terry that silver the night that he died, but I checked the phone records, and it looked like both of y'all cell phones binged off the same tower. So y'all were close proximities within uh, each other. Tasha tells her, look here, I'm a married woman. I don't want you to know that me and Terry Silver was goosing in the garage. Now what? I ain't want nobody to know that, so what the hell you want me to do? She was like, oh, okay, so you did see Terry. She said, yes, I seen him, but I'm telling you, I did not kill him. I don't know who the hell goddamn killed him, and I'm telling you to leave me the hell alone with this. Once again, that damn Detective Blanca, she is too involved in it. She needs to set her ass down somewhere and wait for the evidence to come to her. She doing too damn much. So Proctor is in court with his old crazy ex, and it's his custody court that they in, right? Now, both of them are pleading their case as to why they feel like they should have sole custody over the child. Ultimately, ultimately, the judge is like, the girl is old enough to where she can make her own decision about who she wants to stay with. So they go in there with the little girl. It's Proctor, his ex, the judge, a lawyer, and like somebody else. And so Proctor's telling them like, like, we shouldn't be in here for this because the judge asked the little girl, okay, baby girl, who do you want to live with? And the little girl is looking stunned. Like, I don't even feel like the judge should have did like that. Was weird to do anyway so the little girl kind of like breaks down starts crying because she sees because Proctor's like go ahead tell the judge that you're fine with me and everything is good but then the ex is like don't you remember how fun it was when we would get our nails done so that like messes with the little girl's head the little girl breaks down crying Proctor goes over there and hugs her was like can't you see how this is breaking her down you know what fine I'll agree to joint custody because I don't want to put my daughter through this and the ex is like fine I think that works out for everybody. I don't even think she really cares about having custody of the daughter. Again, it's just whatever she can do to stick it to Proctor. But again, you know she has an ulterior motive of trying to catch his ass up so that she can get full custody over the daughter. You watch that ex. Watch that damn ex. Tommy is staking out goals. He got a clean shot on his ass. He finna get ready to take him out. He texts Tyreek and says, heads up. He's getting ready to send it, but for some reason, he deletes the text, and he's just kind of sitting back and looking. He pull out that pistol, baby. He finna get ready to pop the ghost ass. Next thing you know, a bag over Tommy head, he get thrown in the back of a van. He like, what the hell going on? Then he show up, bag off his head. He in a whole nother location. He with the Serbian. He like, what the hell, man? I had a clean shot off and attacked this nigga. How what you doing? Better say what's all the problems. Serbian dude was like, you know what? I changed my mind. I think I want to keep Ghost alive right now. Now, why do you want to do that? I don't trust this Serbian dude. I don't trust him for nothing because, like I said, he done told Ghost that you need to pay me a hundred thousand every two weeks not to kill your ass, but then go tell Tommy I don't want you to kill him just yet. Like it's some, it's some. Don't trust that Serbian dude. I want if the Serbian dude trying to get Ghost and Tommy to take each other out. You watch that. Tasha busts in over there at Ghost Ass at the house. He in the house drinking his damn problems away. He's sad. <laughs> Broken in dick, dick dog. He's so doggone sad. He don't know what to do with himself. Tasha busts in. She like, look here. You need to let me know what's up with Terry Silver. I know you know what's going on. Where he at? Let me know what's going on. So he finally does admit like, yeah, I took him out. I killed him like, hey, what? Like, what you want me to do? So Tasha tells him, if you want me to keep my mouth closed, then you're going to have to pay me some doggone money. Now, first go see tell her like look here i gotta pay these dogs on serbians i don't have no extra money to pay you she like that sound like a you problem not a me problem or a we problem so you have to figure that out so he does agree to it he was like fine i'm gonna give you a little funky ass some money then as she's leaving out this nigga gonna have a nerve to tell her and don't come back because you don't live here anymore i'd have been like i don't give y'all so tyreek old goofy ass roommate comes back in there again and it's like hey um he come back he got all this money because you know tyreek done gave him a whole sack of pills that he can go sell so now he feel like we just rolling in dough we in the money so he tells him hey it's this girl that want to meet you she said if you don't meet her she gonna go turn us in so tyreek i like all right fuck it whatever so he goes, knocks on the door. It's this cute little brown-skinned girl to come out with look curly hair and all of that. Basically, she like, look here. You one of like five other black kids that's on campus here. Whatever it is you're doing out here selling dope and all of that, don't do that because you're going to get us all caught up. 
Tyreek started running game on her ass. Tyreek was like, what? What, you working a bookstore, huh? With the laptop you got gonna make it to the end of the school year? You probably ain't got enough of your books, don't you? Girl, don't you wanna be out here making some real money with a real nigga out here making some real bread? Come on, get on with death, bro. <laughs> Just playing. But now he tells her, like, look here, you want to make some real money, come holler at me later. And guess what? That's exactly what the hell she does. Because later on we see she goes, knocks on his door, and was like, look here, you want to be out here selling this shit, you're going to need somebody smarter than Blake, dumbass. And I don't even know if that's a roommate name. He just seemed like he dumb like that, so we're going to call him Blake. You're going to need somebody smarter than Blake. So she ended up coming in the room, and as she walking in the room, Tyreek kind of looking at her up and down, and I was like, Tyreek, uh-uh. Looking like he trying to goose with that damn girl. So now Tyreek out here, he got two workers working for him. And he calling hits on niggas. Tyreek, if you don't sell your goddamn Mustang down. Yeah, this damn Keisha gonna piss me off. So Tommy shows back up at Keisha house. He got a badass little Chanel purse that he done bought for her, right? Instantly she gets pissed because she knows that that's the purse that she wanted. And the only person that knew she wanted that specific purse was Tasha. So she gets pissed because she knows, oh, so you've been over there talking to Tasha ass after I told you not to be over there talking to that damn heifer. But Tommy tells her, look here, it's some stuff that I can only talk about with Tasha. I can't talk to nobody else about. So y'all, this damn Keisha called herself trying to seduce Tommy, kissing and rubbing and feeling all on him and all that, talking about, mm-mm, I'm trying to be your one and only and your forever. You know, she's trying to be a hustler's wife out here. It was like, no, you got me now. So it ain't some things that you can only talk to Tasha about. It's some things that you should only be able to talk to me about. Now look here, Keisha gonna get killed. I don't trust Keisha. I don't trust Keisha. I don't trust Keisha. She gonna get killed because she trying to be too much and she ain't, she ain't about this life. She ain't built for this. She gonna get killed. She gonna try to kill Tasha. Or Tasha gonna try to kill her ass. Or something. Or she gonna roll. I don't trust Keisha. Mm -mm, I don't trust her. All right, y'all. So it's the day of Angela's funeral. Paz is in there before everything gets started. It's just her and Angela's body in the casket. Now, Paz is going back and forth. She got that phone still. She like, what do I do? Like, whose side were you on? I don't know who to trust. I don't know what to do. Just then, the pastor walks in, and she apologizes because she was going to say, you know, I know, I know we still need to pay. The pastor's like, no, no, it's already been taken care of. Like, you don't have to worry about anything. And so Paz is like, so was the name of the person paying? Was it James St. Patrick? And he was like, nope, that's not the name that was on there. So after they leave out, so after the pastor leaves out, it's still just her and, you know, um, Angela's body in there in the casket. And so Paz, she then calls sex. And it's like, so has anything happened with my sister's assets? Is everything still frozen? He's like, yeah, everything is still frozen. We're still, we're still trying to work everything out. We'll let you know, you know, if we find out anything. But in the meantime, have you heard anything else about anything yet? And she's like, nope. I don't know a damn thing, hangs up the phone. That's when she realizes that it was Tasha that paid for everything. She ends, ends up texting Tasha from that number and says, thank you. Puts the phone in the casket with Angela, buries it deep in one of the pillows, closes up the casket and says, now your secrets will be buried with you. Baby, that made me like Paz's sister right there. Just because you riding for Tasha. That was some cold shit right there. Y'all, so they're at the grave site or whatever, right? All the detectives are there. Donovan, Tamika, Sax, even the old dude, the old, the other Hispanic dude that Angela used to mess around with, right? So he's talking with Sax. And Sax was like, oh, you know, I didn't know that you and Angela were still really close. And he was like, yeah, she was the one that helped me with the whole Jimenez trial. Now with Angela being dead, our star witness, I'm hoping that he won't recant his story. Now that Angela being dead, I'm hoping that he won't be afraid and that he won't recant the story. You'll hear who the star witness is in just a few minutes. Because I was like, what? So as the pallbearers are going, they put Angela's body on the little rolling thing. You know, they're going to get ready to put her in the ground. They take the flag, they fold the flag up, and they give it to Paz, Angela's sister. That was so sad. Oh, that was so sad. Just then, Ghost and Tasha show up together. Everybody bug out like, what the hell going on? Baby, next thing you know, Tommy shows up. Tommy shows up, goes right up to Paz, shakes her hand. You remember me, Tommy? Yeah, I used to go to school with your sister. I'm truly sorry for your loss. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. She's like, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Not knowing you the one that killed her ass. Then he goes, he stands up, he sits up there like a soldier and looks dead at ghosts. Like, yeah, bitch, I'm here. What? 
Paz and Tasha look at each other. They make eye contact. Paz kind of nods and tells Tasha, thank you. Ta Tasha, like, you already know, bitch, I got you. You helping me, I'm helping you. Then Ghost looks over at Tasha and was like, Tasha, did you know Tommy was still alive? Tasha like, yep. <laughs> After that, Ghost ends up going back to the Serbian. He like, you told me, you lied to me. You told me Tommy was dead. He was like, oh, that's just the business. So Ghost is like, well, I'm going to have to take this nigga out. He's like, well, if you take him out, then you're going to take over as my new distro. And that's just going to be what it is. Ghost is like, I'm not in the game no more. Like, I'm not trying to do nothing. this. He's like, oh, well, I don't already told you. You take him out, you're going to replace him. And that's how it's going to be. Proctor's ex ends up putting that keychain on the daughter's backpack so that she can get his ass caught up doing something sneaky. As we know, the little girl comes um, back. She gonna end up working for Tyreek. We see that in the end. Tommy is teaching Keisha the drug game about where the Serbians are, where the Jimenez are, where this is, where that is. He teaching her the drug game. Lastly, we see Dre. The star witness in the Jimenez trial, baby. I was waiting to see Ro Timmy with his fine ass. He's in the house working out. Detective Donovan comes in because just as he's coming in, Dre sees on the news that today, um, U.S. whoever, whoever, Angela Valdez was laid to rest. So Dre like, what the fuck? So soon as he seen that, like I said, Donovan walked in and Dre like, so what, the he mean ass killed Angela? Donovan like, I don't know, but look here, you testifying against them tomorrow and I need you to pack up your stuff because after that, you're going to be out of New York for forever. And y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. This episode had a lot going on. I know this review was long. I tried not to make it as long, but hopefully y'all still enjoyed it all the same. If there were some parts that I missed, please comment down below and let me know. But y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think, because I feel like Keisha gonna die. Either somebody gonna kill Keisha, or Keisha gonna try to kill somebody, and she gonna end up dying. But I just don't trust Keisha worth a damn. And Tyree needs to sit his little bad ass down somewhere for real. But I hope y'all enjoyed this review. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think. And um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ah, uh -huh.